Welcome to Stevenage in the United Kingdom. This is the location where Airbus have been building spacecraft for over 50 years. Now they have another crucial project in their hands. The ExoMars rover, also called Rosalind Franklin, is getting its pieces together in a specially designed clean room. Let's have a look at what they are doing. Hi, Hello. how are you doing? Hello, Paul. Thanks welcome. for welcoming us. That's here. all right. Welcome to our clean room. Do you want to come and see the flight rover? Come and see Rosalind? Yeah, tell me a bit what, what are we going to see. We're going to see the real flight rover today, which is in our biologically controlled clean room. The real so, one. The real sure. one. Yes, the real one. The Finally. final one. Yes, <laughs> so come on in. So this is the uh, flight solar array. It's actually upside down at the moment because they're working on the underside of it. Uh, but that's one part of the, of the rover that's being worked on currently. The other part is up the stairs. So come up on up and we'll have a look at the other half. Here the rover is being fitted. That's right. So the, the main thing they're actually working on at the moment is the locomotion system, which is being bolted onto the side of the rover uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll test and we'll make sure that it all works correctly before we uh, ship it off to environmental test. Probably the main thing that makes this particular integration unique is, is the planetary protection elements. So whilst we have tested different uh, models of, of all the equipments talking to each other before, never have we had to do it with all the constraints of all the planetary protection and the cleanliness we need to ensure throughout the process. The goal of ExoMars is to find life on the surface, and more specifically under the surface of Mars. And that means that we absolutely cannot take anything organic with us. So that informs things like material choices. So the wheels on the rover, for example, are metallic rather than being made of rubber. But that also means that when people are working on it, they may, must not in any way organically contaminate the rover. And I heard that the humans are the main biohazard here. Yeah, by far and away, yes. The, the, the dirtiest thing the rover will encounter throughout this process, unfortunately, are the humans working on it. So have to be very, very careful in the way that they do work on it, the, the dress they have to, to, the garments they have to wear, um, and, and how they actually go about working on the flight rover. We shed uh, like millions of uh, particles or skin flakes every day in 24 hours. So now compare these millions uh, every day to 9,800 spores uh, that, uh, that is the, the value of delivery after all the integration, after one year of integration and few months of testing. So this gives you a little bit the level of challenge that, that we have. What is planetary protection? Why we are doing it? The objective of planetary protection is uh, um, uh, to avoid what we call forward contamination, which is basically um, contamination coming from Earth to another planet, in, in, in our case, Mars. And this is mainly to, to avoid what we call false positive. A false positive is when uh, our uh, search for life instruments will detect life, but there is uncertainty if uh, that, that type of life is, is indigenous in the planet or, uh, or is coming from Earth because we contaminated the, the instrument. This is a changing room uh, where we're going to get dressed to enter our uh, bioclean facility. Uh, but where I'm dressed Well, uh, the thing is we, we need to get dressed a little bit more careful. We need to, to wear uh, sterile garments and I'll show you in a minute how, how to do it. Okay, so the approach uh, will be uh, from, uh, from the top uh, to the bottom. So we will start uh, putting our uh, sterile gloves on uh, because we have a sterile face mask. So to handle the, the, the mask, we need to put sterile gloves. Mm -hmm. So if you sneeze in the area, uh, what you should do is leave the area. And then uh, depending on the, um, you know, the amount of sneeze that you have, mm -hmm. you can even be escorted out. We have been told about all the challenges of keeping the rover clean to go to Mars, but what are the um, challenges of the environment over there once it's, it landed? One of the big things about Mars is that it's very, very cold there, but also that the temperature fluctuates quite dramatically day to night. So you've got to survive in this very cold environment. Mm -hmm. All of your batteries, all of your computers have to keep going even though the temperature is very low. I spent five years leading the design team for the structure of the rover, so including the bathtub. And the bathtub is really quite a bespoke and unusual piece of equipment. So it provides a lot of structural functions, but also things like thermal insulation. It's got to be biocontaining, so it's got to stop any contaminants inside the rover from getting to the outside and to the, to the Martian environment. But also it's going to be one of the first carbon fibre structures on Mars. What is this little thing here next to the drill? 
Uh, so just on the side we have the cloopy, which is the close-up imager, and that's one of the ways that we're going to look at the sample um, that we're bringing into the drill and detect whether there's anything interesting there, any microfossils or any interesting kind of chemical structures in our rock. What is this? What, do, what is what you have here? This is what we call the Mars Yard. It the Mars a, Yard? The Mars Yard. It is a simulation of the surface of Mars. We have a test rover, as you can see on the surface there, and we run it around on, on the surface, testing the different capability uh, and the, the limitations of the rover we have. Let's have a look. Yes. Wow. Any, uh, so here we have it, yes. Real Martian environment. It is, a, it is the simulation of, the real, of what we expect to find on Mars uh, with the sand and, and the rock, as well as dunes, as you can see in the background. The analytical drawer is the science package uh, of, of the rover, which contains a number of instruments that are going, and mechanisms that are going to process the sample and look for the carbon atom as a sign of extinct or extant life. Uh, it's very sterile because we want to find the life that's there and not what we brought with it during the integration process here on Earth. I've been involved in Mars missions for quite a while and it, it interests me, the, spe the specialist and the constraints of putting something on Mars and the ability to look, to answer the question of whether there's life on another planet. It's all getting integrated together and you know that that hardware that you once just dreamed of and was once just an idea in your head is now physically a reality and it's actually going to another planet. I mean, that's pretty cool. Be standing in front of the one that's actually really going to go. That's, for me, that's, that's the reward of doing all of this. It's the end product, it's the end game now.